So here we go, I've done it. After much pain and patience, I've finally finished my line art. And now it's time to destroy this line art through the process known as colouring. Hmm. So I'm going to be using these graphic markers, alcohol-based graphic markers from Aldi, which was purchased sometime in 2019, I think. They do seem to be of reasonable quality. They feel very durable. They're of a slight triangular shape. And when ink comes out of them, and the ink comes out extremely readily, very vibrant. So they came in packs of strong colours and kind of weaker pastel colours. If I hadn't have got the weaker pastel colours, I must say using merely the strong vibrant colours would have been a pretty frustrating experience to me because without the lighter shades it's basically impossible to get. Um, smoother gradients. Before I destroy this piece, I did um, do a bit of a test just to see if I could get a smooth gradient here. Mm, it's okay. I start off by I picked three colors, one for the light areas, medium areas and dark areas and then I and then with the light area pen, I basically will shade in the, almost the entirety of the form of it. And then the medium area pen, medium intensity. I'm not explaining very well, but then I do that. And then the dark shade intensity. And then in an attempt to blend all of these colours in one another a bit more, I go, no wait, is it the light one? Yeah. I grab the lightest shade that I started off with and I just try and drown out the darker colours with the lighter colours. And I get, you know, a pretty reasonable effect. And the effect usually gets better with a tiny bit of time as well. Although you have to be careful and make sure your paper's thick enough. Because the alcohol markers will bleed straight through a thin sheet of paper. Now the tips of these markers, there's two tips. One on each end. There is the big tip. There's a thin tip. Both of these tips have zero flex about them. It's just like a, it's a hard marker tip basically. Just a real hard marker tip. Unlike a more flexible tip like this Tombow brush. Tombow brush pen you can get a lot more expressive lines out of the thing. But this is a completely different kind of pen and shouldn't be compared except for the brush tip, of course. But some alcohol markers do have a lot more flexible nibs than these hard tips. 
Now, did I mention before when you're blending the colours from alcohol markers that it's best to do it when the ink is still a bit wet on the paper? It just blends a whole lot more easier. And then I just started colouring and basically the way I described earlier. Yeah, one thing I forgot to mention is the type of paper I'm using. It's just an ordinary, I think 120 GSM sketchbook paper, which I think I also bought from Aldi as well. Yeah, I bought it from Aldi. So I've got markers from Aldi and a sketchbook from Aldi. But the paper isn't actually designed for alcohol markers though. It's just designed for pencils and light ink, you know, the usual stuff. Nothing from stopping you from putting alcohol markers on it though, it just bleeds through the paper a lot. So I just put a few extra pieces of office copy paper underneath to stop it from bleeding onto the next page down. Now if you want to, you can buy proper paper which is designed for alcohol markers, like a blending paper, I think it's called. Unfortunately, I'm not in the position to purchase any blending paper because of the um, wink wink, cough cough, you know what I'm talking about? I'm in a lockdown at the moment. That's the story there. So I just have to use whatever I have. Now I must admit that when it comes to alcohol markers, I'm a bit of a noob. This is really my first piece which I've spent anything more than 10 minutes on, and I've probably only done about half a dozen tests beforehand, including that other strange aquatic dinosaur thing I did, which I showed you. Would you like me to tell you about these little things that I'm drawing, these little creatures? Yes? Oh, good, because I'm going to. So these nameless aquatic dinosaur things uh, basically breathe through their skin. They extract oxygen out of the water through their skin, and the amount of oxygen they can extract from the water is highly dependent upon the surface area that they have. Unfortunately, when they're born, they have a very low surface area, and when they get older, like the large one in the center, their skin starts to roughen up and grow large tendrils out of their head, a bit like a axolotl. So because the young ones have a very low surface area, they don't have enough oxygen uh, to continue their existence. So they have to stick close to the mother and extract oxygen out of her oxygen-rich skin. So that's the uh, idea behind that scene anyway. Now while using the alcohol markers, I found just by switching rapidly between two colors, I'll just draw for like probably seven seconds and then quickly switch over, barely putting the cap back on, to the other colour, and that way I could get pretty smooth uh, blending. I'll just be holding two caps of the pen upside down in my hand, and I'll just, you know, use, use them as little pen receptacles, and just rapidly switch from one pen to the other. Marker, I'm calling, no, I should call them markers, shouldn't I? They are markers, that's what they are. So I'll just rapidly switching from one marker to the other, to get that nice smooth blend, which on this paper was never really that smooth, but I'm quite happy with the result. Now for value, these markers are very high, they've got very high value. I think they were like $16 or something for 12 of them, which comes to like $1.30 per marker. So even if they were slightly worse, I would still recommend them because they're just so cheap. Yeah, in fact, I quite enjoyed uh, colouring in with them. I'm not going to hesitate to use them again. But I can't say it's 100% good news with these markers. They do get the tick of approval from me due to their value, and they are still of reasonable quality. It's just that in some spots, the quality control is a little bit lacking. Like, for example, the colours which are on the caps. Sometimes on a few markers, I noticed that the colours on the caps don't exactly correspond to the colours that the markers actually produce. Most of them were pretty close, 
but some were like way off. So I just um, constantly was testing each one before I used it. And I also did uh, little blend tests as well before I ruined my actual piece I was doing. And the other thing I don't like about them, which has got nothing to do with these markers in particular, is just that they smell a bit, which I, I don't like the smell of the alcohol. But you can't get around that now, can you? Because they are alcohol markers. And that's all I really have to complain about. So besides that, I think they're all good. Although there is the problem of the hard marker tips if you don't like that. But at this price, I wouldn't complain. Looks like I finished. Excellent. Mmm, look at it. Although you have been, haven't you? Because you made it this far. Okay, bye.